of our mountain there was a temple where a man lived all by himself. He's the one who put a red mark on my head just after I was born. He would do this from time to time, I don't know why. Every day at sunset, the man fed us. He fed us little yellow seeds, delicious. No one missed these feasts, not even nine fingers. Sometimes because we were hungry, but often from sheer greed. Afterwards, we would sleep on the cliffs high above the valley below. It was the only place in the kingdom safe from tigers and leopards. The only danger was in the middle of the night when you might lose your footing and fall off the cliff. So we held on to each other. And when it grew cold, Bobo and I would huddle up tight and keep one another warm. Every year, after the rainy season, the troop made a tour of the kingdom to show the world we live in to the little ones born that year. Nine Fingers was our guide, and he led us down to the river. Everyone crossed over, even Bobo, who hitched a lift on his mother. There was a meadow on the other side where you could find lots of new plants to eat, including medicinal ones. Bobo and I tried them all. Afterwards, we returned to the mountain and took up our normal lives again. By now, Bobo and I were one year old, the age when you're supposed to be able to fend for yourself. But a series of events were to take place that would change both our lives forever. Humans had begun pouring into the valley in droves. They built a new village and began farming more land. At first we thought it would mean more food for us, but we hadn't reckoned on them being so selfish. The monkeys of the Troop of the Ruins had the toughest time. They were hounded wherever they went. Food was harder and harder for them to find. And one fine day, they left the ruins.
Soon they entered our territory and began climbing the slopes towards us. Nine Fingers saw them coming. Nine Fingers was nervous. Things got tense. Everyone took refuge behind him. They had gone around the mountain and attacked from behind. They wanted our territory. Fingers and Longtooth pursued them all the way down to the foot of the cliff, and the invaders scattered back to their territory. Then we heard a terrible fight. It was between two males. We recognized Nine Fingers' scream. Whatever happened down there, Nine Fingers didn't come back. But Longtooth did. And he wasted no time in showing who was the new boss. That day marked the end of an era and the beginning of another. Longtooth began by showing off his credentials. Then he clambered onto the highest rock and stared at us, one by one. Everyone knew what that meant. Everyone except Bobo. society you should never be disrespectful to a leader especially when he's just taken the job it was the first time that Longtooth could take the liberty of punishing Bobo and at first Bobo didn't realize how things had changed neither did I Bobo and I still thought we were under nine fingers protection so we kept playing our games wherever we wanted even on nine fingers throne Except it was no longer.